here we have an 11.6 inch gateway two-in-one laptop. Now, raise of hands, who here even knew Gateway was, like, still a thing? That's what I thought. But they are, in fact, still around. They're producing sort of, like, entry-level notebooks, and we've actually got a few of them that we're going to be reviewing over the next few few weeks, because uh, that's, like, our timetable here. Uh, but anyway, this one is an 11.6-inch kind of thing that folds in on itself and creates a little tablet, and it's not exactly the most powerful laptop in the world. In fact, what we want to find out is if this is the worst laptop in the world. Spoiler alert, this one isn't it. In fact, for a $199 computer, I actually think this thing is not too bad. Let me dive in a little bit deeper. This one comes with four gigabytes of RAM, it comes with a Celeron processor and only 64 gigabytes of solid state drive storage. Now this thing is kind of reminiscent of the netbooks of yore. Basically like 10 years ago, PC manufacturers thought it'd be a good idea to introduce these netbook things, which were like these chunky, small, useless laptops that didn't last very long, they weren't very powerful. And then Apple's answer was the MacBook Air, which absolutely dominated the market. Excuse me, the screen went black. Let's, let me pause one second to get it back on screensaver mode. Ta-da, it's back. Anyway, so that was pretty much Apple's answer. What was the MacBook Air, which ended up dominating the hell out of the netbooks. In fact, so much in fact that they're gone. You can't even buy fucking netbooks anymore, except, except for this one. So this is an 11.6 inch machine. So sure, it's not FHD, but it is HD, it's got 720p on it, and I do wish that it was a little bit of a tighter resolution screen, but that said, you know, again, it's a $200 laptop, you're not gonna get that. But it is a touch screen, and in fact, it's actually not that bad of a touch screen. Uh, everything is fairly responsive, the screen is pretty bright. Now, it's not the brightest thing in the world, but it's less glossy than most Hewlett Packard screens are, and which is kind of nice because you can sit outside with this thing and probably see what's actually on the screen. And um, it doesn't have a lot of backlight bleed and colors and everything are actually fairly well represented. All in all, I think this screen is better than some of the Asus panels that, uh, that, that they're using in some of their like entry-level notebooks. So from a screen, Part, from, from a screen aspect, it's not so bad. Keyboard and trackpad. And no, this doesn't have any crazy features like a backlight or anything like that. And funny enough, if you look at the keyboard, it's missing the sort of up and down brightness keys. You do have to do that within Windows. But nevertheless, the keyboard is very tactile. It's responsive. It feels pretty good to type on. Trackpad is multi-gesture supportive, and it's it's just it doesn't ghost. It just goes where you want it to. It's got good responsive clicks. It's a better trackpad than a lot of cheaper notebooks I've tested these days as well. And in fact, the build quality on this thing isn't too bad either. It is made of like some fairly good plastics. There are other brands, <laughs> HP, that have used even cheaper plastics than this. Like you basically are afraid to open the goddamn thing up because you think that maybe the hinges will snap apart from the body of the laptop. But I never get the fear of that with this laptop. In fact, this thing is pretty like hefty. Like it just feels pretty good and like it can probably take a beating. Which leads me to my point as to who this notebook is for. See, the thing is, is that this notebook is not terribly fast. Because it has a Celeron processor, even with that solid state drive in it, it does tend to sort of chunk around a little bit when you really overwhelm it with tasks. In fact, here is a Nova Bench score of what this thing is capable of. And as you can see, it's not really that impressive. But this thing does have a webcam built in, and it is a better webcam than I've seen in a lot of, and even frankly, more premium notebooks. Here's, a, here's what the webcam looks like now. This is a test of the webcam on the Gateway 11.6 inch convertible tablet laptop thing. And you know, for a $200 computer, it's not bad. I frankly have seen laptops more expensive with worse webcams than this. But really, all of my complaints with this thing happen to be small little nitpicky things. You can actually get this thing in an array of different colors. This one is blue, but you can get like black, white, and green and some other kind of nifty things. But because it is a foldable two-in-one computer, the, the girth, of, I don't know, I guess you can, this may not translate that well on screen, but you know, it's so heavy on the display here that it tends to tip this sort of light body 
a little bit. Now that really won't probably do anything in practical application, but nevertheless, it's worth noting that that's something that it that it does. It's again, a small little nitpicky thing. Even the IO on this thing is really not terrible. You've got a regular USB port here where you plug in your headphones, a micro SD card, which I think a lot of people are gonna like. For some reason, I get a lot of people asking about micro SD card slots and it does have one. Cannot fit a big SD card though. It's gotta be the, gotta be the micro. It's got, it's got a small little HDMI port there just to plug in your little mini HDMI cable. You know, be, be careful it's not a big HDMI cable. So if you've got like a projector or a TV or something, you will need an adapter. And then it's got a USB super speed port on there, which for a $200 laptop, that's pretty, that's pretty damn awesome, don't you think? And then of course, we plug it in because even for $200, you can't get something that runs on solar energy. But the thing does fold in in itself and creates kind of this like neat little tablet thing. And I found that it is in fact oh, fairly res- oh. section. Let me, let me turn that annoying thing off. That was the mm, switch to tablet, turn off the stupid speaking microphone guy. It does, it's, it, it folds in in itself. Now the thing is, is it is a little bit thick for a tablet. It's like about an inch. And I don't really see anybody using this thing as a tablet. Basically you're sitting in a chair sort of like browsing around and like I just I don't see that happening. It's not very comfortable. It's kind of got sharp edges. You've got the keyboard behind you. It, it's I, I, I highly doubt this will be used in a tablet manner but I've been wrong. Now nah, who are we kidding? I'm never wrong. But nevertheless it is an option if you want to. I think it's a little bit gimmicky and it doesn't have any kind of meaningful pen support. You can obviously use a stylus but nevertheless uh, I don't think you're going to be taking any handwritten notes with this thing in class. But that's who this thing is potentially for. Now hold on a second while I work some camera magic to, to turn this thing back around. Ta-da! So, um, who, who's this thing for? I think that this is like, like baby's first laptop, maybe? Probably somebody that's like in third grade, maybe fourth grade, they need something just sort of cheap but efficient to sort of plunk out Word documents, PowerPoints, Excel, that kind of thing. With a 64 gigabyte solid state drive, and you are playing with fire with that, that amount of storage, but with a 64 gigabyte solid state drive, you're not gonna be able to load any kind of meaningful pictures, music, movies, or anything like that. You will need to use like cloud data if you need to store things, or for that matter, you can have an external hard drive that you can plug in to that USB super speed port. But for those that like, and this sounds maybe a little crass, but for those that can't afford a very expensive computer, I kind of think this thing isn't too bad. 200 bucks gets you like a fairly peppy little thing and you could play Minecraft on here if you wanted to. So like, um, you know, I guess, you know, it's like for like a, your third grader's first laptop or somebody that just needs something kind of small and tiny to kind of get around with, but like they don't do anything like really serious. You can obviously browse the web and do email and stuff like that. Obviously, you know, that you'll, you'll be sort of, sort of limited by the smaller resolution screen, which I don't, on a 15.6 inch laptop, I would crap all over it for not having FHD. But on this tiny little 11.6 inch $200 thing, it's kind of hard to hate on. Speaker wise, the speakers have no character whatsoever. There is no bass or, or treble to speak of. There are no mids, no highs, no lows. It must be bows. So much for my Bose sponsorship. Uh, but nevertheless, the speakers are absolute trash, so you will want to plug in a set of headphones like for almost every purpose. But again, tiny little laptop, what are you expecting? No Windows Hello compatible features on it, so no fingerprint scanner, no Windows Hello camera. It has 802.11n wireless, so it does have wireless built in, but it's kind of the slower, older generation wireless. And it does have Bluetooth. So it's a fair, I mean, again, it's not like a feature rich, but it's not like a, it's not crap either. Um, is this the worst laptop? in the world? And the answer is no. It's actually not bad for 200 bucks. I, don't, I would never buy one myself, but I'd have no problem recommending it for somebody. And if somebody just needs a tiny little cheap thing to plunk away on and there's really no other, I mean, just like that's all they need, go for it. Good for nonprofits. Because it can take a beating if you have like people helping you, like if you've got like an office or a nonprofit or something like that, or people that are taking like information at a booth or something like that and you just need a little cheap beater laptop for like volunteers to plunk away on, this thing is absolutely perfect for that as well. And if you're, if you're like grandmother wants just a cheap little notebook that doesn't, has no frills and doesn't need to do anything with, uh, also fine for that too, but except she might have the struggle with the 11.6 inch screen. So nevertheless, it's just something to kind of keep in mind. It does have Windows Home S mode in there, but of course that's free and very easy to bail out of. So the fact that it only like loads in Windows Store apps is not that big of a deal either. I don't hate it. 
This is the Gateway 11.6 inch convertible laptop. I think if you buy one, it's obviously very purpose built, but if you buy one, I don't think you'll hate it either. You won't think that it's the worst thing since like moldy bread. Um, but anyway, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to reach out to us in the comment section. If you wanna just give us some, what would you like us to review next? We've got a whole slew of other products that we're going to be reviewing. Very, very cheap things. We are still investigating the worst laptop in the world, believe it or not. And we've got a couple gateways too we're gonna throw your way. And uh, anyway, thanks for watching. We will back, be back with another video real soon.